Hey y'all, my name is Sarah and this is my floss tube, Sarah Stitches. This is episode 11. Um, happy Mother's Day to, to all the mothers that are, that are watching. I hope y'all have a great day. Um, just uh, get to enjoy spending the day how you want us to spend it. Um, I, um, I had my Mother's Day early. This um, this week, my um, my daughter was able to um, come in for a few days. She hasn't been in for a couple of months. She hasn't been down here. It seemed like on her off weekend, she works every other weekend. Um, she either um, had a wedding to be in, or was going to a wedding, or had a bridesmaid um, getaway uh, bachelorette party, and so. Um, but now I think she's only got one more wedding. She's got to be in and. Um, then she uh, can concentrate on her wedding. Of course, we had a good time. Um, you know, we did a little planning, and she's still kind of going back and forth on her colors. She, um, um, in case you, you missed my other video, she was recently engaged. She'd been dating this boy for several years, and so we were not completely shocked, but we're very thrilled. And um, so we had a good time. She brought in, I have a silhouette machine, and she had brought in her, she's doing little bridesmaid boxes. And so um, we got the the font on the the names, and we got the vinyl ordered that um, the color she wants. And so I'm going to get those cut out for, her and um, put on those boxes. And I'm sure there'll be lots more going on. But that's that's where we are with that. But um, so she was here Wednesday and Thursday, and so that Wednesday, my son and his girlfriend came in, and then my mother-in-law and father-in-law came over. And we just had a, a nice get together. We had, um, we cooked, we had barbecue pork sandwiches. And um, just, it was a beautiful day. We've had beautiful weather here, except for today. Today is cloudy, rainy. Um, so that, into, today into the beautiful weather. But, um, so we were able to Wednesday enjoy the day, sit outside and um, just, you know, and, being able to visit and so that was that was good so they gave me my mother's day early i got a um a gift certificate to the shepherd's needle and so i already kind of got ideas of what i want to spend that on and then i got um uh, and i didn't i didn't bring it in here i was going to wear it and i forgot pretty bracelet and so um i'll i'll wear it in another video but um so yeah that that was my mother's day she's working today and um my son, um, he, he, you know, neither one of my kids live close by, um, so um, they, um, I kind of got a feeling he might be going with his girlfriend to her mother's today. So um, anyway, I hope I hope everybody um, has had a great week and enjoys their Mother's Day. I also have had quite a few new subscribers, and I just want to thank everybody for subscribing, for watching my videos. There are so many good floss tubes out there, and I just, um, I'm just so thankful that you, um, that you watch mine. Um, since I have had a lot of new subscribers, I thought I'd just give a quick um, reintroduction. Um, my name is Sarah, and I, um, I live in Arkansas, been um, born and raised here. I've been married for 21 years. I um, I have two two grown children. My son is 26 and my daughter is 24. And um, like I just said, neither one of them live um, close by. Well, my son only, he's like 35 minutes away, so he's not too far. My daughter lives up in the northern, eastern part of the state. And she um, she's a good three hours. So, um, but um, we have um, four, four fur babies. Um, all are rescued except for one. One of them's mother was a rescue. And... Um, we didn't know when we got her. She was old. We didn't know she was pregnant until she until she had Jake. But I'm going to insert pictures of my my fur babies. There, um, I have one female. Her name is Leia, and she's the one that um, my daughter's friends found out in the woods. They were four wheeler riding, and I'm going to insert a picture of her before because um, she was in awful shape. She had had a broke leg. She had a horrible case of scabies. Had barely any hair on her extremely malnourished and um she um ended up it ended up we we got her which is it's good she is my husband you know you just um my husband wasn't real happy with me when i told morgan to, to bring her down but oh she's she's his he calls her his um his his girl and uh, calls her pretty girl and so um she um 
but she rules the roost. Is she? She's got the other three. They're males. She got them in line, um, and so she. But I, I didn't want to insert a picture of what she looked like before and what she looks like now. But um, but that is. Oh, I, I worked. Um, I was a school secretary for several years at a junior high, and I quit in um, right um, right at the beginning of the pandemic. I quit. I, um, my mother was diagnosed in 2014 with dementia right before my daddy passed away. And so um, just, you know, just for our situation, she'd been in assisted living and had um, um, gotten too advanced for the place that we were at. And then we tried a couple, a nursing home and that one didn't work out. And um, just for our situation, we just decided um, that um, I would quit my job and stay home with her. She is, she'd been with us and I was taking her to a adult daycare. But um, as her dementia advanced, uh, and then of course when the pandemic hit, um, she would not have been able to go anyway. But um, my mother was um, had broke her shoulder and was wheelbarrow, it was in a wheel, is in a wheel, was in a wheelchair. Now she's bed bound. But um, so I was, you know, it was very stressful trying to get her up in the mornings, get to work by seven o'clock in the morning, get her to daycare, feed her, and. Um, because she had gotten where she really wasn't walking. I was doing I was doing all the work, lifting her back and forth. And she's a small lady, so thank goodness. But um, anyway, so we just decided that um, it, was, it was just best that I, um, I stay home with her. So when I quit, and um, that's when I got back into cross-stitch. And um, I had cross-stitch as a child, well, as a, I guess, 11, 12, 13, something like that. And I had... Um, actually gone to a friend of mine's um daughter was getting married and i gone to the bridal shower and um the the bride's grandmother cross stitches and she gave her the cutest little um pattern that she had stitched up and you know i hadn't thought about cross stitch in years and when i saw that i thought wow that's really cute that's really that, it's really changed a lot since you know i had last seen it because i was stitching the precious moments and the garfields and I did, I had some ornaments that I had done up. I can't remember. I don't, I don't have them anymore. But anyway, um, so I went to Walmart and, um, you know, just picked out a little kit that they had. That Walmart don't have any, have a lot. We don't have a Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Joanne's here. Um, so anyway, I stitched that up and that just kind of got me back into cross stitching. And then I found Floss Tube and now I'm making my own. And I just, I'm so glad that I joined the community. I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun, and I have met lots of wonderful people through this, and um, have made and I, I consider some friends. And so, um, I just I just wanted to give that little brief um, little reintro because I just I'm so thankful for all my new subscribers and and for my subscribers, the, the people that come back every week and watch me and comment. I'm so thankful for y'all. But um, with that being. Um, I, I would like at this point to move on to, I've got a few shout outs that I would like to, to mention. These, these ladies have some um, really nice things to say about me and I, I had watched their channels and so I'm, I'm going to um, give them a few little shout outs this, today. Um, the first one is Crystal Rowe. I've actually been watching Crystal since her first video. She's got out several more than I do. She started um, before I did. But, um, and I just, I enjoy her video. She's so cute. And she's from Kentucky. I believe it's Kentucky. She, um, she's got that just a cute Southern accent and, um, just, um, just so sweet. And just, you can just tell she has a good heart. And, um, I love, she stitches a lot of things that, um, I'm interested in. A lot of, you know, when she's pulling out stuff, I'm, I'm making notes, and this is what I like to stitch. I can, um, when I'm, she just finished, I think she finished it, was the Brick Creek um, Nativity Row, and I've got that on my wish list for one, two, three stitch. I want to, I want to do that one up, but um, I just, she's just, I um, enjoy watching her as I'm cross-stitching, and um, that other one is Sierra, not Sierra, I think it's um, Kiara Osborne, um, She's from Arkansas, too. She just moved to Arkansas. I don't know how long she's been here, but she moved. Um, her and her husband moved here from New York. I believe they had family here. That's why they, they moved here. But she lives up in the northwestern part of the state. I'm more in the south. 
So we, unfortunately, we do not live close enough where we can stitch together. But that, that would have been fun. I would have enjoyed that. But um, I've, I've, like I said, I've just recently found her. She's new. Um, and I, I enjoy hers. She quilts also and has shown, um, and sews, has shown some of her um, previous things that she has sewn. I know her and her husband are fixing to close. They're building a house and um, are getting ready to close on it. So she's really anxious to, to get moved so she can get her house decorated. But she also is another one that... Um, when she starts showing her projects, I'm like, oh, well, I've got that one already, or I've stitched it, or I want to stitch it. So she also is um, one that stitches a lot of things that, that I like. But um, the next one is um, Stitches of Sass. She, um, I, I don't know where she's from. I want to say maybe Texas. I'm not sure. But um, she's also a new, new girl to floss tube. And um, she's in that um, group. There's about four or five of them. They're kind of in a, a little group that they, they're stitching that floss tube friends chart. And they, they mail them back and forth to each other, like in a round robin type deal. And each stitch on um, a person in it. And that's, that's a neat idea. But um, she is stitching also um, one of the projects I, I'm enjoying watching and I hope she keeps showing it is the um, Follow the Yellow Brick Road by Little Dove, um, I guess, Stitchers. I, Wizard of Oz is one of my favorite movies. We, Me and my daughter always, when she was at home, we would always watch it when it comes on, because you know it comes on at least once a year. But I've always liked Wizard of Oz, so I just find that fun to um, to watch her stitch that. And um, one day I would like to, to stitch one, I'm not, I don't have it in my immediate plans, but um, I would like to stitch a uh, uh, Wizard of Oz chart. But, um, and then she's also doing one with um, Mary Shelley, the lady that wrote Frankenstein. And I listened to Frankenstein um, with the, um, the um, it's by Mountain, um, Sapphire Mountain. It's the Stitching Book Club. I don't know if that's the official name, but I, um, I did the Frankenstein. I've got them all. I just, I'm really behind on them. I haven't even stitched Frankenstein up yet. But I listened to Frankenstein and it was really good. I was shocked. I didn't think, to be honest, I didn't think I would like it as well as I did. And it's totally different than what you would ever think. But anyway, um, all these ladies just, um, you know, when you got a moment, check them out. They've all got great channels and um, I think you will enjoy them. I, um, I think that's it. I've, I kind of did my update, you know, what, what all went on this week with me. And um, so I'm going to um, move on into my whips. I did. I was kind of surprised. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't think I would get as much stitching in as I did. Because like I said, my daughter was here for a few days. And, you know, we were visiting. But she, um, her fiance did not get to come with her. He is a baseball coach. And this is regionals here in Arkansas. And so um, the his tournament where his school played wasn't but almost two hours from us. So through a lot of begging and pleading and getting her fiance in, texting my husband, they talked him into going. He wasn't gonna go, but he ended up going. And so I had one evening, cause they left like at three o'clock in the afternoon. So I had that evening to myself. And so I was able to, to really get quite a bit more stitching in time than what I thought I would. So I will um, start with what I worked on. I did, my first one I'm gonna show you is an older chart. I hadn't pulled this out in, oh, quite a while. It's the um, Fright Night. It was the Mystery Sale by Fat Quarter Shop. They had done up and um, they had out. So this is it. And I've always thought it was cute and always have intentions of finishing it. But so I pulled this one out. I'm kind of getting in the mood now that I've started stitching a few Halloween and I have a fall one that I'm going to start here in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm kind of getting in the mood to start stitching fall along with my patriotic. But this is my um, progress on it. Um, I feel like I did a lot of stitching on it and don't have a lot to show. <laughs> <laughs> I already had the Halloween, um, all the Halloween letters done. And I mostly worked on the spider web and the um, 
I got the spider in. So I'm hoping this next week I can actually start on the haunted house. But I am using, um, I don't have, I didn't have the, the DMC conversion, but I didn't have the um, exact DMC. So I just pulled colors that were similar to what they showed. And, um, but now the white is called for. It's the um, DMC, um, I know it just says white. I don't remember. I might be using B5200. I'm not sure. But anyway, this is my progress on it. And it's stitched on a, it's either 25 count or 28 count Lugana. And it's a, I actually over dyed it in a pearl gray to make it a little bit, it was more of a blue color. So I um, put a pearl gray dunk on it and made it more gray. So um really enjoying this one. I'm, I'm going to stitch on it some more this week. I'm, I'm excited to get into that haunted house. So just, I just think it's really cute. But that was, what was that? Then I also worked on my um, firework lane. Y'all see that every week. I'm not even going to pull out the, the picture of it. But um, this is where, and I do have I'm going to insert a picture of where I was last week on it. And um, this is where I'm at. I got my blue, I got the house done. So all my houses are finished. I've got just a little bit of green to put over here. And I think there's a flag and a tree. There's, and then I just can't decide if I want to stitch the words. At the bottom of it, it says, God bless America, land of the free. I'm still debating whether or not I want to. I got a feeling I'll end up stitching them because it it kind of makes it you know I feel like you kind of need it but and of course I've got some more a lot several more fireworks to do and um but this has been a lot of fun and so I'm hoping if I just keep working on it a little bit every week that I will have it done and be able to get it FFO by um, 4th of July or for July but there's that one. I also pulled it out. I worked again on my Prairie Schooler um, night before Christmas. And this is it. And I've been um, slowly but surely getting, getting some progress on it. And this one is stitched on a 28 count um, Lugana. It was a Be Stitch Me fabric. I can't think of the name of it now. I've lost the little tag that was on it but this is where I'm at I got this deer done and I got this one started I got a few more little snowflakes to put in and then um I'm hope I can start on I think I'm gonna start on Santa and the sleigh next but this is another one I'm just gonna work on a little bit each week and um we'll see I don't know if I'll have it done by Christmas but um I feel like I might would if I work on it a little bit every week. But it's another one I'm enjoying it. These prairie schoolers, this is I've got some other ones, but um this is the first prairie schooler I've actually have stitched up and I'm I'm enjoying it. It's it's a good fun stitch. And then I worked on this is the one I worked on the most. Um I worked on my start from last weekend and it's the um for freedom by Annie B's Folk Art. And this is another fun stitch and it's pretty quick. Um, I feel like I made lots of progress on it. Because last week I only had the the cow's head as Laura um, Stitching by the Shore said in her video last week. She had to put the body in because the cow's head was floating. And I had a floating head last week. <laughs> I kind of got tickled on that when she was talking about that. But I still have to, um, I'm going to work on the word freedom this week and then put the little grass and flowers. But this is so cute. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, um, this is stitched on a, it's a 28 count. And I honestly think I had bought from Fat Quarter Shop the Lori Holt, 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 Holt um, I think it's Antique Flowers or um, Flower Market, um, chart and I bought the um, the fabric to go with it at the time they were out of the DMC boss pack but um, I guess it had come loose out of the package 
and I honestly think this is the fabric I bought for it. And um, I'll have to say they're my, it's a pretty good size. I don't know, I haven't looked at the um, dimensions of the um, buy one market, but see, I still got quite a bit. So there still might be enough on here to stitch that. I hope so. If not, I'll just find me another piece, but it's really nice fabric. I really like it. Um, but this is this is where I'm at on it. And I'm, I'm hoping, I feel like I'll have this one finished by next week. Um, that's my goal was to get this one finished. And that was all that from previous uh, my whips that I worked on. I have a new start that I started um, Monday, Friday, I think. This week, I'm, this weekend, I'm gonna have two new starts. I said I was only gonna do one start, but now I'm kind of um, I, I got to feel the next couple of weekends I'm gonna have two. There's just so much stuff I want to stitch and start, and I just, so I'm like, well, it's maybe a month, so why not? But this is, it's the new one by um, Prim Rose Cottage Stitches. They're on Etsy and I will link their store and I will put a picture of the chart. It's called, cause that mine's a PDF. Um, it's called All American. And I will put a picture of the, um, what it will look like when it's stitched. But when I saw this, I just had to get it. I've, I've got a really cute idea to finish it and um, just was so excited when I saw it. And this is my, um, where I started. This is my start on it. And it's, it's mostly words and it, it will have, this is going to be, let's say, fourth. And there's going to be like fireworks in here. And um, I can't remember what else in it. But it's, it's going to be pretty good size. But, um, but this is where I'm at. And it's fun. I'm, I'm going to work on it some more this week. This is on a piece of, um, I believe it's 28 count Lugana, not Lugana, but it's um, one that I just picked up at Hobby Lobby, but it might be a Monica. I'm not sure. But anyway, I coffee tea dyed it, and this is it. It's a little bit more modeled. Well, it's coming across pretty good. It's a little bit more modeled in person than what... Um, and what it um, is coming across, but but this is it, and I'm using for the most part all the call for colors. They um, called for weeks um, Louisiana hot sauce, and I did not have it, so I switched it out to Crimson Satin by Victoria Motto, and this is it. Is this is. This is coming across brighter on my camera. It's more of a deeper red, it's real pretty. And then I switched the white they called for, uh, I believe the DMC B5200. I'm switching it out to bamboo. I have um, I have a lot of bamboo. I was in the Stitching Housewives um, Trucking Along series and um, I have not stitched all the, the charts yet for the trucks. And so I've, I've got a bunch of bamboo because I, I, I got the floss packs every month too. And so I'm using that. And if I did not have the call for DMC, I only had, I think two, I um, just switched it out to colors that, that I thought would work together and would, you know, they would all look real pretty. It's kind of, but um, that's my, that's my new start. And um, definitely will be get working on it. I, I want to get this one finished. And the one I'm going to start today is, um, it's by Lindy Stitches. It is Walk Fast Sampler. And it is the, uh, the one that, and I'm going to insert a picture here. Um, that is the, it's the Golden Girls kind of, um, uh, she, she based it off the Golden Girls where the Rose, um, I don't know, if you watch the Golden Girls, you'll be familiar. You know, Rose is always telling these crazy stories about, um, St. Olaf and when, when she grew up and it says you can lead a herring to water but you but you have to walk fast or he'll die and <laughs> I, just, I just loved her sayings and um, just loved that show that was it's one of my favorites um, when my mother first moved in um, with us we you know TBS plays them 
uh, all day on Sundays and Hallmark plays them and we would watch those. And of course, Andy Griffith, she loves Andy Griffith. And I do too, you, you can't beat these shows. But, um, and so I, I was, uh, I had, when I seen it, I was like, oh, I gotta get it. Well, I'm stitching this with um, Rainy, um, from Rainy Day Reads. She is a booktuber that has recently started cross stitching. And she has started putting cross stitch and making cross stitch videos along with her book videos. So I will link her channel below. And um, the other girl that's in it is, I can't think of her name, but she is the bookish knitter, knitter on Instagram. We're gonna stitch this together and um, and I'm excited to do it. I tend to t um, gravitate more seasonal patterns. I have more of those than anything else. And um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to having um, another whip that is not seasonal that um, in my rotation. I do have the, uh, the temperature tree but so, um, so I'm gonna add this one because I think everything else I have is seasonal, which I love. I'm not not fussing, not griping about it, but I do like to, I do like other things too that aren't seasonal. But that is um, this new start for this week. And I'm thinking next weekend, I'm gonna try to start, I'm gonna insert a picture, if I can get it all together, Autumn Lane by um, Little Stitch Girl. And I'm gonna do this with Laura at Stitching by the Shore. And um, and I also want to start, um, I've got the barn I wanna do from the Waxy Moon Barn Trio. I'm gonna, I'll link a picture. But um, I've got to, to get my fossils together on it. I don't, I kind of looked at them and I'm gonna have to do some substituting. Um, if I can't, I don't know, I might, See if we can't make a quick trip to Shepherd's Needle and get some flosses. I don't know. We'll see. But those are my my two. These are my new starts that I have in mind to start. And who knows? Something else might uh, like that All American popped in, and I just had to start it. So something else might pop up that I just I just got to start too. So, but um, I did dye a little bit of fabric this week. I got um, I did some coffee tea dye this time. The first one is Rit Dye Blue Denim, or Denim Blue, and I dunked it in some coffee tea dye. And I, um, it's not, it's, I'm, I really like it there. You can kind of see the modeling in it now. But I'm thinking, I'm going to, it's a little bit more modeling in person than what it's coming through, but I really like it. And I kind of think one of my, ba my barns might look good on this. I don't know if I'll be able, I'm not going to stitch them together, but um, I think I could get two. I don't know if I can get three of them on here, but um, anyway, that is the plan for this. Oh, that kind of, oh, well, it's on the edge. and won't be able to see that. <laughs> That's kind of big old blob there. And then um, the next color I did was teal, Rick D tea dye teal, and I did a coffee tea dye on it. And, um, oh, this one's good right here. You can really see it. Thought that turned out real pretty. I originally thought I could do my um, Walk Fast um, sampler from Lindy Stitches on here, but the colors just did not. Um, well, let me see, here's the colors. What do y'all think? It might work. The only one I'm worried about is this. I'm kind of scared this is gonna blend in too much. This is what, this is one idea for it. The only one I'm kind of concerned, other than this one, and I guess I might could switch it out with something else. Do y'all think that might blend in too much? I kind of feel like it might, I might have to, I might could switch something out. But I just, I think this would be really pretty with all these other colors. Let me see if I can't show it again and see what y'all think. See, I just think that would be so pretty. So I got that choice option. And then I tea dyed, um, this is a 32 count. And I baked this in the oven. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use it because it's got some burnt spots on it. And I'm just not sure. I wasn't paying attention and let it, let it get by me. But this is it. So you can see right there, but this is close to the edge. I feel like, you know, 
it's this little spot here that I'm kind of worried about, but it may not, once you start stitching, you may not see it. Um, this is my other one I was thinking about stitching my um, walk fast on. And see, y'all y'all give me what y'all think. If you think I need to go with the, just the beige coffee tea dyed or the colored. See, it looks pretty on here too though. Let me, let's see, hold on. This is when I need one of them boards a lot of people have that they show. Okay, let's see if this is better. Here we go. See, there's that color too. So I think it looks pretty on here too. So just give me some feedback on that. What y'all think? Because I don't know, I'm kind of thinking this might, I might switch it. We'll see. But that's what, um, those are my plans. I, um, I don't really have much of a haul. The only haul I have is when I bought the new, the PDF for All American. And I did get, while I was shopping on their website, she has Etsy, they have an Etsy store. I did get the new Christmas chart they have out. And I got Welcome Summer also. I just, I thought that would make a cute little um, pillow or a, for my tear tray. But um, anyway, that's that's really the only haul I got. Uh, um, also, oh, talking about haul, I received from one of my subscribers, she sent me a thank you note, she had won a giveaway. And um, she made me a stitch card. And I, I wanted to show it, her name's Terry. Um, I don't ever, I hope, I didn't ask if I could say her name, I hope she didn't mind. I, I don't ever know how that goes. Do you, you know, do you add, do you, do you just say their names or you need to ask? I'm kind of leery on. But um, anyway, um, I just thought that was so pretty. And just thank you so much, Terry, for um, for sending this to me and taking the time to stitch this for me. Um, I just, I really thought it was pretty. She has a cute little stamp on the back, has her, her name. And so I just, I just loved it. I thought it was so sweet. But, um, and then um, yesterday, my husband and his sister, they're big into racing. They, you know, they, he, my husband actually used to race dirt, um, dirt track cars, you know, and back in his younger days. And um, so there was a dirt track up north of us and there was, she talked him into going. She he was she she was wanting to go, so he rode up there with her. Well, they stopped on the way by Hobby Lobby and a few other places, and um, he picked me up the rest of my flosses for um, the walk fast. And he was in Michael's, and he saw this and he bought it for me. It's kind of a Mother's Day. It's the golden because he knows I love Golden Girls, and it's it's a book that has several projects in it, little charts. And I've seen this on Amazon several times. When I've been looking, it'll pop up. And I've looked at it and I've kind of thought, gone back and forth about it. But anyway, this is it. And I didn't know it, but it came with, it came with a hoop and some flosses. And the flosses really look pretty. I haven't taken them out. And it looks like just 14 count Ada. But um, it's got some cute little, um, it's got the, the story on Golden Girls and See, it's got um, some some pictures in it. I had to sit down and read it. Um, but here's, um, this is the first pattern. And then this is the one, um, it's got some cute ones in here. Um, just from all the things that they say, um, like here, you know, um, Sophia always, when she told her story, says, picture it, Sicily. There's that one. So there's, I'm, I'm going to get to it. Um, but it's, it's real cute. So I was, I was, I was surprised and, and, you know, thought that was really sweet of him. Um, oh, here's another one. As they say in St. Olaf. <laughs> But so that is it's kind of all my haul. What I what I got, I did. Um, 
Let's see what I've got. Oh, this week I'm going to kind of throw something in different. I'm not going to do this every week. Um, but I tried out a couple of new recipes this week that I thought I'd pass on that, you know, y'all might enjoy. Um, I don't always try new recipes every week. My husband's a pretty picky eater. And so um, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes to find things that he's going to like. And matter of fact, these two recipes that I made were, were really for me. Um, uh, I just wanted to try it. I watched this girl on um, YouTube. Her name's Mandy. Her channel is Mandy in the Making. And she puts out recipes once a week. She does three. Um, but she has this segment in it called Subby Supper. And her subscribers send in recipes to her. And she'll pick one and cook it that week. And they always do a taste test. And um, she don't ever put recipes on there that her and her family don't like. But this particular one was called, I can't remember the name of it, but it was something like French Bake. I'm going to leave her, link her channel below because you'll have to get this recipe from her channel. But you take um, chicken thighs or chicken breasts, which, whichever one you prefer. I use thighs. And you brown them in a skillet and you um, add onions and then um, you add a can of Campbell's French onion soup to it. And then you drain a can of French green beans, French cut green beans. And you put that on top of your chicken and you bake it until the chicken's done. I think mine took about 20 minutes. And then after your chicken's done, you take the French fried onion, crispy onions, and you sprinkle on top of it. And then you put it back in the oven just long enough to crisp them up, maybe five, 10 minutes. I don't think it took even 10 minutes. But anyway, yeah, it was really good. Now, since I just made it for me, I really halved it back. I didn't, matter of fact, mine was a little runny because I didn't have as much chicken as she did. But I really enjoyed it, it was good. My husband um, will only eat chicken if it's fried or barbecued. <laughs> so I know he was not going to eat this, but but you know, you could add it with um, cream potatoes or rice and you got a, a easy supper there. And then the second one I found off of her channel was Instapot fried chicken, um, was fried rice. And um, I was kind of leery to try it because I haven't had a lot of success with the Instapot and rice, but I was surprised this one was really good and it turned out really good and very simple. And um, so I, um, I will link her channel below. And if y'all are interested in these recipes, you can get them. And I might try to link the, um, the fried rice one. I think I, it, it came from a website, so I, I can link it. But, um, and it was real quick. It was good. I, um, I can eat on it all week now for like lunch. But um, I won't be doing this every week. Like I said, I don't, um, I like to cook. I'm not the best cook, but um, you know, there's some nights we just might do sandwiches or frozen pizza or go get a hamburger or something. So, um, but I just thought that was kind of fun that, you know, y'all might enjoy, you know, getting a couple recipes. Um, I also wanted to ask, uh, I want, I've got a question for y'all. Do, do any of y'all keep up, keep up with your stitching in the journals? I have this one I got off that quarter shop. It's the, um, the Emma book and I like it. I just, I have a hard time remembering to write in it, but, um, I, I see a lot of people do this, but they all have um, different ways that they do it. And I've seen some of them use the, 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 the calendar, the books that have like the, the weekly layout and where you can put each day. Well, no, not a weekly layout, but it's, it's the whole month and you can write in each day what you work on for how long. And I kind of like that. I'm thinking maybe I might get me a planner and try that um, and just see how it goes. Maybe I'd be, if I keep it beside my stitching spot, I, I stitch right over here. Uh, maybe I would remember to, to write in it, but um, I'm doing better. But um, what, what kind of things do y'all do? I don't keep up with my stitch count. I know I've seen a lot of floss tubers that do keep up with their stitch count, but I don't. But um, I am um, just kind of curious what you do. I did watch um, Laura with Stitching by the Shore. She's gonna start a cross-stitch journal and she's gonna take um, pieces. And I think this is a neat idea. I want, if I do it, 
I really think I am going to try it, but I will not start up to next year. But um, she gave different options of books you can use. But what I like about this idea is like um, this thing, this here, this card. I could put in that cross stitch journal and I could tell, write that this was from one of my subscribers and she has stitched it for me. And also, um, you know, any of these little charts here that I do, I could put in my journal because not everything you want to stitch, you, you want to display in your house. It will go in your house. And I just think that's a neat idea. And then you've got that book that um, you can enjoy and your family can go and enjoy looking and friends seeing what you worked on for that year. And I just, I like that idea. I think that's neat. And I'm, I'm seriously thinking about trying it. But um, anyway, I'm just curious what y'all do. Um, if y'all write in a journal or keep up with your daily stitching. Um, I do have a few books to talk about. I'm trying to hurry up. My video is a little longer than normal. Um, I guess I'm rambling more. But um, I do have a few books that I want to talk about. Uh, um, and I just thank y'all. I had asked for comments last week on what books you enjoy in reading or recommendation. And I got several. And I'll, I'll mention those here in a minute. But I thank y'all for, for, for commenting. The first one I've, I've been reading some more of is Jan Karen at Home at Midford. And this is so cute. I'm loving this book. I didn't realize this book was going to be as funny as it is. I have just laughed out loud um, several times. Yesterday, we had a beautiful morning here. And I was able to sit in my swing and I read, got, I don't, not a whole lot, but I got a little bit of reading done. And just real, this is such a good read. And I had a lot of my subscribers uh, have all said, oh, I read that. I loved it. Um, I do wish now that I would have read this when my mother was trying to get me to read these and we could have talked about them, but it's okay. We, I was, I think at that point in my life, my kids were in junior high or high school and we were just going all the time with whatever activities they had, church or outside of church. So we were, we were very active in church and, um, they had also baseball, softball. My, my son played golf. He did the 4-H um, skeet shooting. And my daughter played softball and did dance. And um, so we were just real busy. But um, really enjoying this book and glad that I picked it up and I'm reading it. And the second book um, I picked, I've i gotten, I had gone to the library. One of my subscribers, Tanya, the sampler girl, had um, recommended... The book that she's been reading is the um, Armory Ames or Amari Ames, A M O R Y by Ashley Weaver. And um, they're kind of murder mystery books. And I thought, well, I had some errands to run one day this week. And I thought, well, let's go by the library and see if they've got it. And um, my, of course, my library didn't have it. Seems like every time I see people post, you know, or talk about, oh, I got this book at my library. It's so good. And my library never has it. But anyway, they, I, I did find a book I like though. Um, but anyway, I could get this book on Hoopla. And um, so I downloaded it on Hoopla. And I have seen several booktubers that have said, um, you know, they couldn't listen to it because of the narration. And this is the first time this has happened to me. I could not this the woman that was narrating this book, I just could not um get into her. I don't think she distinguished the voices enough. She she you couldn't distinguish between characters a lot. And um so I ended up getting it from my Kindle. It's just I could it was real cheap on my Kindle. Um I don't even think it was it was under five dollars. And so I thought, well I'll just get it and read it. I haven't started it. But anyway, while I was in the library I got um, The Forgotten Room, and it's written by Karen Wright, White, Patrice Williams, and Karen uh, Lauren, I can't talk today, Lauren Willig, Willig, W-I-L-L-I-G. And this is, you're following three women, and it's a dual timeline. Each woman takes part in a different, you know, timeline. And they all got this house with in common. It's it's called the Pratt House, and um, it was um, an older home, and it, you know, I know it, at first it was a family home, and then for the second girl, it's a, uh, like a, a all-women's boarding house, and then for the last girl you're following, um, woman, it's a war hospital, 
And so um, it's it's going to be interesting to see how these women, they're all going to end up being tied together in the end. But I'm not very far. But I am enjoying it so far. But that is called The Forgotten Room. So I got that one. And I've been reading it. Um, and I just want to real quick just mention some of the books that some of my readers have um, mentioned to me. I've... Um, uh, a lot. Some of them um, I've, I've already got, and then there's been a few that then I, I did put on my wish list to read. Um, the first one is Cassandra mentioned. She's read the James Harriet All Creatures Great and Small, and I do have this. This is my copy. Um, I haven't started it yet, but um, I did watch. Did anybody watch on PBS the masterpiece they did with this off of this book? And um, I really enjoyed the show. Um, I don't know how well it followed the book, but because um, you know sometimes they they differ a little bit. But the the PBS uh, masterpiece theater production of it was really good, and I think it's coming back for season two. So I've got that one. And then the um, I'm gonna try to insert pictures. I, um, another Linda had recommended Morning Glory by Sarah J.I.O. It sounds like another mystery. That sounded really good. I'm going, I've got that added to my list. Jack one a couple videos back, had recommended The Beekeeper's Daughter, and I've, I've since then have gotten it. And then Kelly mentioned The Giver of the Stars by Jojo Mo, M-O-Y-E-S. And that's about the pack horse librarian system. And I have read... Uh, I actually had this book already on my Goodreads um, to read list, but um, I've read a couple other books about the Pack Course Librarians. The first one was um, Wonderland Creek. I can't think of who wrote that. And then also the Troublesome, no, the Women of Troublesome Creek. I'm going to link it, but both of those books were really good. I enjoyed them. But that's... Um, this next week, I'm just going to continue to read um, The Forgotten Room and um, the um, Mitford series. And, my, and I'm still listening to the audio of Amelia Peabody. Um, can't think of the book. The Lion's Den, is that the one I'm on? But anyway, I'm still listening to it. And that's a really good narration. That that lady does an excellent job. Now, I don't even know if I read the books. If I don't think they'd be the same to me after so used to listening to it, but, um, I just, um, that's all I got. I hope, I just thank y'all for stopping and watching. I hope everybody has a wonderful Mother's Day and a great week, and I'll see you next week.